Another thing Terence Howard claims is that 1 times 1 equals 2. He says it can't equal 1. And one thing in his book he showed was because if I subtract 1 here and here, there's 1 left. Well, any math person would completely flip out because that's not how the identities work. If you have 1 times 1 equals 1, you wouldn't subtract 1 on both sides. You would do the opposite of times or divide. Let's write it more appropriately. 1 times 1 equals 1. You would divide, which is the inverse of multiplication, the opposite of multiplication. So the idea that you could, I guess, it looks funny and interesting, and it's a nice logical um, argument, I guess. Uh, when you say, OK, there's 1 times something, what happens to the other one? The definition of multiplication is that you're multiplying some amount a certain number of times. So only one of these is referring to the amount. You could also look at it as, as rows and columns. So if I say 2 times 3, I'm thinking of 2 rows and 3 columns, and I have 6. If I say 1 times 1, it's 1. It's the intersections of rows and columns. If I say 4 times 2, I have 8. 4 times 2 is 8 because it's 4 rows of 2. So, I mean, you can be creative and come up with different ideas. It's, to me, valuable in the sense that people are talking about math. Math is interesting, but um, 1 plus 1 is 2. <laughs> if you subtract 1, it's 1. 1 times 1 is not 2 unless you want to create your own unique system that no one else is really following or if you want to do math parlor tricks I guess